Hey, how about that? Turn the mute off. That might help sign everyone up. Hope, Hopefully everyone's doing good. We're here just two days after we had another one of these press conference pre-shows. Uh, two days ago we were in New York. Today we're in St. Louis, which is a big one. Everybody's been kind of waiting for this announcement. Uh, even looking at the social media accounts for just all the teams, St. Louis has it easily the largest following. I think they have double the amount of the next highest uh, social media following of any of the other teams. So a lot of anticipation going into today's announcement. Uh, that being said, the name that seems to be rumored, that seems to be all but confirmed, is Jonathan Hayes, uh, former assistant for the Bengals, uh, tight end coach, I believe. Um, and there's not too much excitement. And again, yeah, it may, it may not be the sexiest of hires. It may not be, a, you know, the coolest name, a big name, really, even a name that you may never heard of before, possibly. Um, but honestly, I'm going to go into why that might be an advantage to him. Um, and even Pep Hamilton, when you look at it to a certain extent, right? Uh, neither of those guys have any head coaching experience. So, you know, with a, with a new league popping up that has a new set of rules, you may be able to experiment a little bit more. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Honestly, a lot of people are saying this is the worst hire. It could turn out to be the best hire. We don't know anything until the season starts. But I'll tell you this. If Jonathan Hayes goes 10-0, and these same people that are hating on him now are going to be his best friend. They are going to love him. They will hold those signs in the crowd. Uh, even if they get 8-0, 7-0, uh, probably, you could probably get in the playoffs at 6-0, uh, not 7-0, but 7-3, and 6-4, and four, you know what I mean. Uh, if they get in the playoffs, get to the championship, Jonathan Hayes will be all right with the people of St. Louis. But, you know, time will tell. Uh, you know, and hey, it might not even be him, right? There's a lot of confirmation that it is him, uh, but there was a lot of, there. there's a lot of names that were floating around. Uh, so Ben Fred, Ben Fredrickson from uh, the St. Louis News uh, Depot or something like that. Can't, can't remember exactly who he works for, but he works for a news publication, local St. Louis. Uh, and he was hearing Trey Brown, uh, but he also didn't seem to under. He wasn't, didn't seem too clear on if the XFL had coaches and GM separate than the presidents and all that stuff. The post-dispatch. Thank you, uh, Herky Big. Um, so, yeah, you know, he was saying Trey Brown, and he was hearing a lot of information on that. And that was a name that, like I said, not really, uh, probably less people than that know who Jonathan Hayes are is. Jeez, I can't talk today. Uh, less people probably knew who Trey Brown was. Uh, but just to kind of give you a little recap, or recap, recap on who that fella is, uh, basically he worked for the Eagles scouting uh, department. He's a young up-and-comer guy. Uh, he most recently was the executive vice president for the Birmingham Iron. So, you know, it is very possible that he could end up being the president of the St. Louis team. I don't see him being the coach. Uh, but, hey, who knows? Who knows? Um, another name that was kind of rumored months ago was Jim Hazlitt. Uh, but again, we haven't really heard much that came from Brent Albright. Uh, and he, he had mentioned that, that his name was likely for a team. He didn't specifically mention St. Louis, uh, but it seemed like that would be, uh, probably the location that he would go. But even there, there's been a few things that I've read online. Uh, I, I believe Mike Mitchell even posted that, uh, Hayes was in the talk, was talking to them, but things broke down and ultimately uh, nothing was signed. Hey, what's happening, everyone in the chat? How y'all doing today? You excited? What do you guys think of uh, Jonathan Hayes, right? Give him, give him a chance maybe uh, or, you know, kind of go from there. I don't know. When we were talking about uh, the Houston coach in our Discord the other day, which, again, links down in the description, sign you up. It's a good time. Uh, we we're talking about the possibility of Art Bryles coming to Houston, uh, with the, but with the sexual allegations and all this and that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think a guy with no baggage, uh, the benefit, again, for Jonathan Hayes is 
he doesn't have a bad head coaching record. He just has no head coaching record. Um, yeah, and then again, Jeff Fisher is another one where it's 50-50. Some people want him, some people don't. Mike Martz was the big one. Uh, but it sounds like uh, they didn't even reach out to him. So for one reason or another, I don't know what that is. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, another one that, you know, kind of going back to Tuesday's announcement, Kevin Gilbride, there was mixed reactions. And it seems like the more his name has been out there, uh, the more that people are warming up to him, right? Uh, and honestly... If there's any positives that come out of Gilbride, you can't bash that stash, dude. That is a long time, old standing football tradition that I think is getting swept by the wayside with these modern football folks. And you're never going to see Sean McVay rocking a stash like that. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> but, you know, kind of looking back at that press conference, like I said, we have Kevin Gilbride. Janet Duke, uh, she's coming from Madison Square Garden, specifically working in marketing for the Rangers and the Knicks. Uh, so that, I, I think, is very positive. Uh, so, again, she's worked in New York City, which is a huge city, uh, for a huge company that pretty much everyone in sports is aware of. Major teams work with them. Uh, I think she's going to be able to contribute a lot, hopefully get the name out more, right? Uh, you know, Kevin Gilbride brought up a couple things with the options of those tiered points. You're going to need uh, excellent red zone offense, and hopefully he can provide that. Uh, if anything, maybe he can build a new quarterback star. He did – look what he did with Eli Manning. The only time he was ever impressive was under Gilbride, and they got two Super Bowl rings against the Pats, which is, again, no laughing matter. Let's see what the chat's going on here. Yeah, give Jonathan Hayes a chance. Uh Probably, yeah, Herky Big, I agree. I think Hayes was probably hired before the AAF folded. I think a lot of the coaches were. Uh, I think probably, um, all, probably all of them that we've heard about have been hired, if not all of them. Uh, still no names on uh, who's going to be sitting in L.A., who's going to be sitting in Houston. Like I said, I did, I, I've heard Art Bryle's name tossed around, but that's it, tossed around. Nothing really confirmed, nothing set in stone uh but even looking uh oliver luck mentioned in an interview at least it, it sounds like we have uh the order of our last two press conferences so we have st louis today uh we don't know the dates but it sounds like la is coming up next and save the best for last xfl houston sign us up and again hopefully if the calendars work right i'll be at that press conference covering it live so we probably won't have a pre-show but I'll definitely do a post show or something like that. Uh, also going to start working on like some weekly videos, just some extra stuff to sprinkle in to the YouTube channel. I don't know if it's going to be weekly or as things break, like if there's big news or maybe a mixture. I don't know. Well, you know, time will tell. But if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the chat here or go to our Discord. Links in the description and leave some suggestions there and hang out with some like minded XFL folks. We're always having a good time. The community is building by the day. Yeah, you know, Herky, you bring up a good point. So we've heard some rumors, and it seems to be solid, uh, concrete by now, that the AAF players are free to sign with the NFL, but it seems like there may be some legal problems for them trying to sign in the CFL. Now, that's an answer that we haven't, or a question that we haven't had answered yet, and it's one that I plan on asking Oliver Luck uh, if I end up going to that Houston press conference. But does the same thing relate to the XFL? And if it does, with the players, does it extend to the staff? Uh, now, again, if we do see a Trey Brown, which I doubt, I'm looking at less than 5% chance on a Trey Brown. But if he does, I, it kind of answers that question, at least from an executive level. Uh, but from a player standpoint, I... I don't know. I don't know if it's something to do because it's in a different country. I would think it would make it easier for them to sign with the CFL. Uh, but, hey, you know, time will tell. News keeps leaking because, again, if you haven't known, if you haven't heard, the alliance went out of business and there was a, a small group in the corner of the Internet thinking well, they might revive. They might have a season two. At least they might try. They might try to get some new investors. But yesterday the news broke. 
Chapter 7 bankruptcy, and that is the bad one. They're selling all of their assets, their liquidity. Everything's gone. I haven't sifted through it yet, but there's over 200 pages of creditors that they owe. And the more that I look at this, the more it feels like the fire festival of football. Uh, so we had fire football. I, you know, I heard people say that online leading up to the demise of the AAF. I st honestly, I still had hopes and I, uh, that they would make it the full season and get to the championship game. Uh, but phew, I'm still blown away. I, I don't think I've ever seen a league, a full league fold in the middle of the year. Now, I have seen teams disband. Uh, for instance, in the Arena Football League a few years back, uh, there was teams that halfway through the season, the owners couldn't pay the bills, so they just ended their schedule. Um, so I have seen things like that, but a full league, that is kind of crazy. And, and the whole situation, I, I'll tell you this, it's going to make for a great movie or a 30 for 30 or something. And if honestly, if that was their only goal, bravo, <coughs> congratulations, because you did a bang up job. You know, the, there's so much good drama and conspiracy stuff involved. And I love, again, going back to the corner of the internet that thinks, Maybe Vince McMahon and Tom Dunham were secretly in a partnership to destroy this. You're crazy. And they call me the ref because I call it down the middle. So you're out of bounds and get out of here with that garbage. You know what I mean? Sign everyone up that has at least a reasonable mind on this. Again, it's a real bummer the, the AAF went down. I was going to go to the fl flipping championship game. Luckily, I didn't buy tickets because they never put them on sale when they relocated the, the location here to uh, Frisco. I believe Texas up in the Dallas area. Uh, and it's probably better that they did because it was a couple days before my wedding. So it would have real, been a real pain in the ass to get there, but I would have went just for the heck of it. And honestly, I was going to go to the commanders game uh, before the spring league. And that was the week they folded. So uh, again, I was just going to buy tickets as I got there, but it is what it is. But here we are, you know, about 14 minutes out from the big announcement. Uh, let's just take a look on Twitter here and see if anything's actually officially leaked. Um, it's been a wild ride. You know, it's going to be boring once we have all of the news, right? We're, we're getting the coaches, and that's kind of the first level, right? The second level is getting those sweet team names and logos or possibly TV deals. I hope they don't tease us and do the TV deal announcement and then – the uh, the team names. I, I really want to pack. I want those names. I want those logos. I want the colors. I want to start repping some Houston gear. And quite honestly, I'm probably going to buy jerseys from all the teams. I'm going to buy, probably buy hats from all the teams and shirts and stupid stuff like that. And definitely, we're going to be doing some giveaways. Once they do, once they start dropping some logos and team names, we're going to start doing some giveaways. So that's why it's important you join our Discord because to to be eligible for the giveaways. You will at minimum have to be at rookie level in our Discord, which is only level five. It's really easy to get to. It's like 50 posts. But we, you know, if I'm going to do a giveaway, I want to do it with folks that are engaged with the XFL. I don't want it to do somebody. To, here I click like. Now I have a chance to win. Shoot, you can downvote and down like my videos. I could care less. But if you engage and have fun, sign everyone up. You know, so hey, get to that Discord. Links down in the description. I'll end this shilling for now. Um, but yeah, so we have the TV deals. We have the names, the logos. That's going to be huge. The next kind of roadblock that we're going to get to is going to be the rule book and maybe some of the people that are going to be eligible for the draft. So some of the quarterbacks that they sign, I think those are probably going to be the, the first big names that we hear. And maybe some wide receivers and some of the bigger names. Like if Sean Oakman, for instance, declares that, he wants to go to the XFL or signs a deal to be in the draft. I think that's somebody that we'll hear about just because he has name recognition. Uh, and again, good. I want to see that. I want to see people like Sean Oakman getting into this league and proving that they, they have it, right? And there's dudes uh, in kind of a similar boat that maybe s screwed up their chance uh, either by not playing the greatest or having attitude problems or both like a Johnny Manziel that want to reinvent themselves or excuse me, I'm sorry, John Manziel. I got to retrain myself on that. I want to give the man respect for all I know. He could be the starting quarterback of XFL Houston. And if it is, 
again, I'm going to give him a chance. Is he my first pick? No. But sign him up if he's here. I'll give him a chance wherever he goes. Now, if he starts screwing around and, and partying and doing things when he's supposed to be at practice, then, yeah, I'll tell it like it is. Again, right down the middle. Out of bounds, son. Incomplete. Get out of here with that garbage. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll start hearing some team names. And then, you know, this is one that kind of escaped everyone. And who knows if this date is official. But there was an interview I posted on XFL 2K. Again, check it every day for the latest updates. Maybe about a month and a half ago uh, of an interview with Oliver Luck where he states that the XFL draft is going to be on September 2nd. Now, I, I don't know how I missed that. And again, I don't know if that date is actually solidified. But it looks like September 2nd is the day that we may be looking forward to. And that's another one. If they do it, if it's a public event or even press-only event, you bet your ass. I'm going to try to be there to get us all the latest scoops, real-time posting, all that fun stuff. And realistically, I hope they televise it. Either just stream it online. They're doing a great job with the press conferences. There's no reason they can't do the same thing for the draft. Um, you know, a couple other interesting notes out of uh, some interviews this week with Oliver Luck as well. Is he, he again confirmed, which I've confirmed just from his speech at the Spring League a couple weeks ago, but they have confirmed they have deals signed with broadcast partners. They haven't released the names yet. The rumors, again, are Fox Sports 1 and Fox, as well as ABC and ESPN. Those are, again, just rumors, nothing solidified. It could be one or both or somebody completely different. But they are finalized. They are signed. It is guaranteed, guaranteed, two games a week on broadcast television and two games a week on cable television and channels, as Oliver Luck put it, that you will be able to find that you already know. So no digging around on BleacherReport.com, no subscribing to the NFL Network, none of that garbage. We are getting on regular TV, free over-the-air broadcast TV, and that is huge. That is huge. If they can draw the same types of crowd the AAF was getting alone, that will be a big deal. But I think just because of the wider audience, we are going to see much bigger numbers, hopefully over 2 million a game. That is my hope. That is my baseline. Um, and I could see it probably going down as the season goes on. But my, my personal benchmark for the XFL is 2 million people per game, at least on the over-the-air broadcasts. Um, and again, the, he also mentioned they will be streamed. He didn't say if it was through the broadcast partners themselves or if it was through an app that they are building, but they will also be able to be streamed as well. Um, so again, as we hear more information, we will we'll break it. You know what I mean? And like I said, this YouTube stuff, I'm having a little bit fun with this. So we're going to probably start doing more of these videos. But yeah, the names, suit Houston Oil Kings, it has to have, <coughs> excuse me, I really want, it has to have something oil related in there. Houston is oil and gas. We might as well just be walking around on barrels of oil. That is what, if oil and gas goes to crap, there is no city of Houston. It will be a national emergency. It must be done. If you ignore the oil and gas industry out here, I will be sad and I will throw some type of warning at you. Yeah, the, the Derricks, the Oil Barons, the Oil Kings, um, the Roughnecks, any of those I'm fine with. I don't like the Houston Texans name, right? I love Texas, and I am a Texan uh, transplant. You can probably tell by the accent. Uh, but I, I feel like I'm a full-fledged Texan. I love it here, but I hate the name, the Houston Texans. And it's, it's hard to go against the Cowboys, they have, they're just that established team, you know. Uh, but time will tell. Give us, uh, ooh, if we could just even somehow buy out that Oilers name and get those sweet baby blues, I would be signed up all day and night. Not going to happen, but we might be able to keep the color scheme. On the color scheme, though, honestly, I think what is going to happen, and this is something I don't know if they learned from the Alliance or they figured out before the Alliance figured it out, is I think the color schemes are probably going to be very similar to whatever teams 
already play in those stadiums. Um, and the reason being is when you look at the St. Louis Stallions with their baby blues playing in a stadium with the Utes bright red all over the field because they couldn't paint over the red with their blue because it wouldn't work. I think somebody learned a lesson somewhere in there, right? And so I expect the, the Houston team is probably going to be darker red and black like the, the, the Cougars are. Uh, the, the, the Dallas team has the luxury of they have no team there already. St. Louis similar as well. Uh, but I think St. Louis would be stupid not to go with a similar look to what the Rams had. Um, but yeah, time will tell. Uh, we have about five minutes left here, so I'm going to wrap some things up. Uh, go back into show mode. Like I mentioned a few times, check us out on Discord. Link's down in the description. You're definitely going to want to get to that rookie level if, you're gonna wanna, if you want to be eligible for some of the giveaways we're going to do in about a month or two here once they start releasing some of the team merchandise. Uh, make sure you hit us up at XFL2K.com every day for the latest news. Faster and better than any other uh, anybody else that's doing it right now. Other than some of the podcasts, right? I'm not a podcast guy. But as far as websites, I think we're doing pretty damn good. We're about, I'll tell you, traffic-wise, we're getting about 30,000, 40,000 users per month right now, which blows my mind. So sign everyone up that's checking it out. And if you aren't, what the heck is wrong with you? But hey, drop us a follow on Facebook and Twitter at XFL2K.com. No dot. Trying to get those good uh, usernames there, but one day we'll see if those guys answer my DMs. Always have the latest news, probably more, uh, probably faster than you'll see on the website. Uh, and then again, here on YouTube, make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell. See when we're dropping new videos. Some are going to be pre-recording, some are going to be live. Oh, just like this one. So until next time, I think I'm going to hit out, uh, check out this press conference. See if Jonathan Hayes is the man. But check us out. Have fun. And until next time, ooh, sign you up.